What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today we're gonna to be comparing the brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio versus the older Surface Book 3. The Surface Laptop Studio is a very different approach that allows the display to lay flat to be used like a tablet, where the Surface Book 3 allows the display to detach to be used as a tablet, so if you already own a Surface Book 3, should you upgrade to the Laptop Studio? And if you don't have either of these, should you just save a little bit of money when the Surface Book 3 goes on sale? I hope this video helps you make that buying decision. We got a lot to talk about. Let's go ahead and jump right in. When you look at their designs, they are different, but also similar at the same time. If you're used to that magnesium and aluminum build, they both feel extremely well built. But there are some notable differences on the laptop studio. Because of that new screen flexibility, you do see a seam on the lid with the logo that's shifted down, where on the Surface Book 3, is still right in the middle. So I'm sure some of you will like this better, especially if you're a fan of symmetry. The display bumps out of the frame, which does allow it to close flush onto the keyboard, which I really like because the fulcrum hinge on the Surface Book 3 still allowed debris into the keyboard, which wasn't ideal. The studio has a totally different hinge mechanism and has this peculiar rise on the bottom with ventilation for better cooling, which I appreciate. But sneakerheads, come on, it looks kind of like a Sakai LD waffle. But I did want to show you that there is a gap or dead space there still where the hinge is, but it's a much smaller gap than it was on the Surface Book 3, so that's a great step forward. Even though the design choice is a little bit weird because it does make the Surface Laptop Studio sit up a little higher, they did find a way to make it useful. Right underneath the front is where the Surface Slim Pen 2 magnetically attaches so it's out of sight, where on the Surface Book 3 it sat magnetically on the side of the display, so let me know which implementation that you like better. The Studio is a more compact device and the footprint is closer to the 13 inch Surface Book than the 15. The Surface Book 3 did come in two screen sizes, but the Studio only comes in one size with a 14.4 inch display. But if you look, you can see that the bezels are smaller on the Studio. The display on the Surface Book 3 was great and I've had this 15 inch model since launch and the display is fantastic. It does have a higher resolution 3240 by 2160 display which I really like and while the Laptop Studio does have a lower resolution display at 2400 by 1600 it's still 3 by 2 in aspect ratio. And it has that killer feature that everybody's talking about and that is 120 hertz refresh rate. I noticed it especially with the animations, it just feels smoother and a little faster all around. It's really hard to show over camera, especially with 24 frames per second, but I don't think this is fully optimized yet because some animations do still feel like 60 hertz once in a while, but I'm definitely enjoying this. Right now, this is fixed at 120 hertz, but dynamic refresh rate is coming later in a software update. Both aren't crazy abundant when it comes to ports, but the Surface Book 3 does have an advantage. It has two USB-A 3.1 Gen 2 ports on the left side, along with a full-size SD card slot, which I really appreciated, a headphone jack here at the top of the display, and on the other side, we have the Surface charging port, which we have seen forever now, and a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port. The Surface Laptop Studio has a headphone jack and a Surface charging port on the right, and on the left, there are two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which I think is a step in the right direction. This is hard to believe that this is the first Thunderbolt-enabled Surface device. The only thing is that I wish there were four Thunderbolt 4 ports instead of two, but I think that we're going in the right direction, and I'm glad that they're here nonetheless. So after using the Surface Laptop Studio for the last few days, there are some improvements that I want to talk about over the Surface Book 3. And first is the top heaviness. The Laptop Studio is so much more balanced when it comes to weight. It's more comfortable when you use it on your lap. On the Surface Book 3, depending on the angle that you had to display, you can really feel the weight imbalance. So I usually kept my Surface Book 3 on a desk or a table most of the time. The fulcrum hinge worked really well, but the top heaviness caused a lot of screen wobble when touching the display. The hinge on the Surface Laptop Studio is better for touch input. There is still some screen movement there, but the hinge is super solid. It really does take some force to move it. 
Second is the keyboard. It's almost like the design did a swap here when it comes to color scheme. It all depends on personal preference, but I personally like the way that the keyboard blended into the body on the Surface Book 3. But when it comes to keyboard quality, they are very similar, but I like the laptop studios better. It feels less mushy and the tactility is on point. I think you're really going to like it. It was something that I noticed right away, so I think you're going to be able to tell the difference as well. Third is the trackpad. It is much larger, so I think it's a major win, and it also is a haptic trackpad, so it feels very similar to the MacBook, and I like it. This is one of the best trackpads that I've used this year, and just the sound alone makes a difference in everyday use. I'm just going to let you hear it. Let me know what you think. I'm assuming with this design, they're killing off the Surface Book, and I was kind of sad because the detachable screen idea was really cool, and all the components that you needed were on the display itself, and then when you needed that extra battery and GPU power, you just dock it back and you had a killer laptop. All these years have gone by, and frankly, there were really no great use cases for this, and also no killer apps were made to take advantage of this platform, so I can see why they're moving to this design. So to transform it, there are a couple different ways you can do this, whatever is more comfortable to you. But if you put a little pressure back here, you can see that this is magnetically attached and it becomes free. And from here, you can just put it into tent mode. And this is also magnetically attached, so it is secure. This is a great viewing angle, and this is awesome for watching content or playing games. What I appreciate is just how fast it is to lay it flat to use like a tablet. It is so much faster than the Surface Book 3 where you have to detach it, flip it around, reattach it, and lay it flat. This is especially awesome if you combine this with the pen. There is slight haptic feedback on the new Surface Slim Pen 2, which is a nice touch. It's subtle, but it's neat. It's at a slight angle, which didn't bother me at all, but it's a little bit higher off the ground than the Surface Book 3 Detach, so that is something that you need to keep in mind. And because of that angle and the gap underneath, you can feel a little bit of screen flex and you can feel a slight bounce when you're writing, but it didn't bother me. I think that if you use the pen a lot, you'll find this to be a fast and fluid experience. It's a fantastic combo. Also, if you want to share the screen with somebody in front of you, then you can also just flip it all the way around just like this. So I think people will dig the design. So if I was confused about this, then some of you might be as well, but the hinge cannot adjust to any angle that you want. It is actually free floating, as you can see here, until you secure it in those three different positions, laptop mode, tent mode, tablet mode. Another big improvement that you will definitely notice are the speakers. The front-facing speakers on the Surface Book 3 really aren't great, but the Studio's four Omnisonic speakers blow them away. These speakers are excellent. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all in them. Super crisp audio, and it gets really loud as well. So let me just give you a sound comparison just to show you how different these two devices are when it comes to audio. If you're looking for the best performance, then there's another reason you might want to upgrade to the Surface Laptop Studio because it's powered by the Intel 11th Gen processors and is available in either a Core i5-11300H or a Core i7-11370H, which I have in this machine. With the entry-level model, you do get a bump up with Intel's XE graphics, but when it comes to dedicated options, you can go up to an NVIDIA 3050 Ti, and that's the one that I have in this machine. I'll show you what it can do a little later. Just a few benchmarks for the processor gains that you will see. You can see that the single core is very similar, but the multi-core is where you're going to gain in performance. You can see that here in Cinebench 2. This one shows a significant gain when it comes to multi-core. Here are the graphics gains if you want to see this in benchmarks. I have a 1660 Ti in the Surface Book 3 and the 3050 Ti, as I said, in the laptop studio. These laptops aren't really geared towards gaming, but if you want to get an idea, here's what Shadow of the Tomb Raider looks like. I use this game all the time because this one is not too crazy. You should be able to play this on most systems. So I just ran the benchmark, and here are the differences between the two laptops when it comes to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I know what you guys are typing already in the comments. Why the 3050 Ti? I think it's a very capable GPU, but I do think that Microsoft should give you some more options, maybe a 3070, just so if you want a little bit more power, they should give you the option. 
because honestly, it's doing a good job thermally and the fan noise is actually fairly quiet under full load. And the fans are really strong actually. You can just see it here and it blows out from the sides. And here's what it looks like thermally. You can really see it dispersing right through the front there and the keyboard and all of that is pretty neutral. And even under full load, it stayed fairly cool at the bottom. So I didn't have any problems with keeping this on my lap. I'm not sure if it's just a limitation or if it can fit, but I think thermally it could handle it. So Microsoft, if you're listening, please, some stronger graphics options in the future. But in saying that, I think that the 3050 Ti will be good for most people. And even when it comes to games, just put it on medium settings and it's very playable. I think most people are very smart if you're looking into the surface segment anyway and know that these are not gaming beasts but I had no problems on medium settings and it was an enjoyable gaming experience. And Microsoft makes it really easy with Xbox Game Pass. You have tons of choices here and you also have cloud gaming as a choice. So you can take advantage of that as well. So if you made it to the end, kudos. Let me know which one that you would pick in the comment section below, the brand new Surface Laptop Studio, or would you pick the Surface Book 3? For me, I think I would automatically jump onto the newer studio because of the newer internals, and I think the design is pretty much better in every way. They both run Windows 11, so that's no issue, but I will dive into this in another video. I do love how clean it is. The UI is just fresh enough to where it feels new. The multitasking is great, so I will dive into this further in another video. I'm assuming that the Surface Book 3 now will go on sale, so if you can scoop it up for a good price, it's still a great computer, and I think it will do for a lot of people. So if you don't care about all the new stuff that's in here, I think this will also be a great buy as well. So for me, I'm going with the Surface Laptop Studio. I'm really excited about this form factor. Let's see what Microsoft does with it. I think it has a lot of potential, so I'm excited to keep using this for the full review. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content on the Surface Laptop Studio. And if I missed anything and have any questions, just shoot those down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I do a follow-up video on the full review. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one.